It's not a rational thought I have, I fully concede this, but every time I encounter a person who was born in the 21st century, post-2000, I find myself in a state of shock. For one, certain landmark events, and I'm not trying to overestimate the value of 9-11, but somebody who was born post-2001, as an example, and views 9-11 as a historical event rather than an event he or she experienced, I always find that odd. Now, rationally, of course, that makes no sense because people are being born all the time. And it's only reasonable that people will be born post-2000. People fuck, they have children. Makes total sense. However, it's just an odd thing that occurs in my mind. Perhaps in my case, because I'm so fucking old. Who knows? But the point of this video isn't that. It's that in recent months, it's come to my attention that there are many, many young people coming on to the scene of the so-called manosphere and I've encountered a few of them, and they are very, very young. And by young, I mean shockingly young, 13, 14. And on occasion, I encounter some of them, and I have conversations with them. And so I thought it might be useful to talk about the new generation. And I do think this is a new generation. It's not just Gen Z. It's a generation that's been born post-2000, a generation that has been born in some cases in the mid-2000s, and they're really in a completely different territory. And one of the things I've consistently talked about is information overload. And some of these guys that are dipping their feet in the manosphere and learning about so-called red pill matters, I would suspect can be, if they're not aware of it, overwhelmed by the sheer volume of material out there. What's relevant, what's good. And in as much as I'd like to help this generation, because I think it's important because they are something completely new onto the scene, and on top of that are working with a different set of challenges due to technology, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. I suppose I want to offer an overview of what I think are important takeaway points in the context of MGTOW. Now, at the outset, I should say that this is not an authoritative perspective. This is just my opinion. You should always think for yourself. My words are not the words of authority on anything or an expert. And if you take value from the things I say and the things you hear, well, that's great. But I may be incorrect, and what I say might not be correct for you. I just want to say that at the outset. But if we wanted to go over some core red pill concepts, the things I'm about to list out are the things that I personally think are very important and have wide-scale application for the masses and should really be heeded if you are a very young person, a boy in this case, if you're 13 or 14. The first thing I want to mention is what we call male sovereignty. And that sort of seems self-explanatory, male sovereignty, right? But in the context of the modern world, 2019, that has some very specific qualities. Now, some people would interpret male sovereignty as an adventure in selfishness. People might say, Stardust, you're advocating for men to be selfish and not take responsibility. And as many of you know, especially you young striplings, there's a person active out there, Jordan Peterson, talks about the necessity to take responsibility to give meaning to your life. I don't necessarily disagree with that. But one criticism I've always had of Peterson and those like him is that responsibility without reward, responsibility for nothing, is pretty hollow. On top of that, in the context of male sovereignty, and this is important to stress, we have to be aware that our lives, your life, is not a charity. The idea that you should have responsibility but get very little in return other than the burdens that others thrust upon you is absurd and insane. That's precisely the type of responsibility, incidentally, that a guy like Jordan B. Peterson is telling young men, they should assume. Assume responsibility and get little to nothing in return because we all know in the current environment that the rewards you reap are very few indeed. And if you do, it really is just a crapshoot more than anything else. It's not a consistent pattern. And he's stuck in the past anyway. So what does it mean that your life is not a charity? It means that if you want to assume responsibility and you actually get some kind of reward or recompense in return for assuming that responsibility, well, that might be worth it, whether it's a work-related responsibility, school in your case, if you're a young stripling, even a relationship or a marriage, which I personally wouldn't endorse, but up to you ultimately, sure, then go ahead by all means. But if people around you, 
whether it's family or friends or the general societal trend, if these people and these things are urging you to take responsibility for the most nebulous reasons and you're getting nothing in return, I would say maybe that's the time that you assume responsibility for yourself and assume that position of what we might call male sovereignty. Because at the end of the day, no matter how young you are, you're going to die. I'm going to die. We're all going to die. Life is short. Sometimes it's cruel. Sometimes it's not. But it is short. And so you have this one life to live. And your life is not a charity. Your life is not there to be given away to everybody willy-nilly. Because some ethereal claim has been made that you need to assume responsibility. And then you, in turn, ask the question, for whom? And nobody gives you a good answer. For your friends, your family, and they don't give you anything back or very little back. That is not responsible. That is not reasonable. So I think that's a very important lesson to drill home if you're lost in the masses of red pill material out there and there's so much of it. There's too much information out there. Not all of it is good. Hell, maybe even some of my information and my thoughts aren't good. I'll concede that possibility. But this is something I think is important. Male sovereignty means your life is not a charity. You live it primarily for yourself and for the people that you choose to have responsibility for if you get something in return. If they recognize that responsibility has value. And that really is the only context in this world where Jordan B. Peterson's message, as an example, has value. If you actually get something in return, don't play the martyr. Don't live your life for other people. And when you're really young, as you presumably are if you're watching this video, that can be difficult. You have obligations. You're dependent on your parents. I'm not saying shirk your responsibilities there, but be aware of these things. Be aware of the expectations other people put on you. And ask yourself, frankly speaking, what you're getting in return. Because this is an incredibly powerful lesson to learn. There are many, many men out there, much older than you, young boys, that have gone through the rigmarole. world. They've gone through life, and they've experienced that, much like a film. They've done tons of things for people. They've been quote-unquote responsible, and either they got nothing in return or they were punished for it, as in the case of many divorcees who, as you know, tend to lose quite a bit. So be cognizant of that and assume male sovereignty. Male sovereignty being the simple understanding that your life belongs to you. It's not a charity. If you want to share it with somebody, personally, I have no problem with that, but make sure you're actually getting something for it. Or, as the late, great Barbarossa once stated, make sure the juice is worth the squeeze. In the context of male sovereignty, I would make the very simple statement, and the other really important thing to be learned is know thyself and understand the world. It's important to understand your nature, female nature, and human nature. Now, there are a lot of people who don't think that's important. I won't name names. They think that you can, quote, unquote, take the red pill without any understanding by just understanding the basics. Well, I say that's not good enough. And especially for you, young stripling, if you're a young man, that's not good enough for you. I can tell you why, quite simply. If you're 14 or 13 or 15, you don't even have a fully developed prefrontal cortex, which means your executive control, above all, your ability to control your impulses will be very weak. And so that knowledge that you can acquire is critical in counteracting some potentially really stupid decisions you're going to make because you're listening to your biology and your instincts and you're a horny fuck or you're mesmerized by some female that happens to be in your class or that you got to know at a party or what have you. That knowledge is going to be critical. Notice I'm not saying, yeah, bro, man, fucking women suck, bro. Just avoid them, bro. I'm saying know yourself, know male nature, and know female nature. Understand the intricacies of those interactions, why you're doing certain things and why women are doing certain things. Because especially at your age, you are operating at the most primal level. But at your age, these drives are strongest. And so it's really important to take the time to understand actual biology and why you're doing certain things and why it feels good to interact with a female. And as an addendum to that, think about the long term. Think about what your interactions might mean long term. If there's long term profit to you, if it's actually beneficial to you long term. And that is something that's critical that goes hand in hand with knowledge. So when people say take the red pill, I don't even know what that means. But I would say take the time to actually understand the biology and the psychology behind yourself and the females you're interacting with. A final point I would make 
is a point that is very difficult to accept. I think it's probably the most difficult thing to accept for men of all ages, and that is, at least as much as the world is concerned, you are just a utility. You are there to serve a function. You have no inherent value. You don't have a womb. You don't bear children. Therefore, you have no inherent value. Do not let yourself get deceived by the impression because your mother coddles you or your mother, quote-unquote, loves you, that that is an accurate representation of A, the way women view you, and B, to a much larger degree, the world views you. Many, many moons ago, his name was Man, Woman, Myth, before your time, when you were a toddler, and he stated, women are human beings, men are human doings. Now, you can, for the purposes of your own life, be a human being, but that's not how the rest of the world will view you, and you need to be cognizant of that. You are a utility. Inasmuch as you are useful to other people, particularly women, they'll see value in you, and that's all you got going. Whatever your mother feels about you, that's because you're her son, and that's it. No other female in your life will ever view you that way, and to the extent that they do have affection for you and do care about you, that affection and this care will be predicated on certain conditionals, those conditionals being you better be fucking useful to them. From that follows a great deal. It ties back into male sovereignty. If you're going to take responsibility on for something or someone or a bunch of things, make sure you get something in return. Because, again, your life is not a charity, and people are going to take advantage of your willingness to act out that role. And by that I mean, quite simply, men have a natural inclination to take on the role of being that utility. This is just bred into us. This is what we know as men. Because we almost instinctually know that our value is not inherent, it's in the things we do. Not in our existence itself, because that is the property of the female, being the limiting factor in reproduction, but in the things we do. And I would say knowledge, understanding, male sovereignty, and the awareness of your position in the world as a utility, and people might not want to hear that, but that's what you are, Maybe not to yourself, maybe not to your mother, maybe not to your closest male friends, but that's what you are to the broader world and certainly to women. That These three things are the most important lessons you can take away from MGTOW and the quote-unquote red pill. MGTOW isn't political despite what people claim. There's no right or left wing to it. It's about those things to my view. And from that, pretty much everything else follows. If you want to make tons of money because that's what interests you, go ahead. But bear in mind the things I've cited. If you don't, go ahead. MGTOW is just a life choice at the end of the day, a lifestyle that you may or may not choose to pursue. But if you're going to do it, whatever those end goals might be, if you're really young, going forward, I think those are probably the most helpful things I can say to you and offer you in terms of how to best navigate the world. Anyway, to the young striplings of the world, I hope that was helpful. It's an increasingly difficult terrain to navigate. And as somebody who has one foot in the grave already, it's a bit less of a concern compared to you who have your entire life ahead of you and will benefit from all kinds of technologies I won't live to see. I would suggest if you're going to go your own way, go your own way bearing those three things in mind. Anyway, if I'm still alive, I will check you out at a later date. Until then, may God's watch over you. Bye-bye. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.